Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Heart and Soul. I'm in the studio today with the next step in my vintage book journals. So if you've been following me along on this series, I think this is video number six maybe. So thank you for joining me and, and sticking by. I think this might be the last video in this series. I haven't quite decided yet. They'll, they'll Maybe later on I'll do an actual a flip through when I'm have more to show or that kind of thing but if you're just joining me for the very first time welcome uh, I hope if you enjoy this video you'll give me a thumbs up this is kind of a first to me it's going to be kind of an introduction part of the video and then a fast forward craft along uh, the reason being is I don't always craft on camera I'm very slow I'm still new at this and I don't always feel comfortable so I'm attempting to do something today where I did a recording over the last uh, day or so it probably took me two and a half hours to actually do the page in this and then I decided I wanted to go ahead and try doing a voiceover I've never done that before so I fast forwarded and edited the, the whole uh, video and then did a voiceover describing what I was doing because this is a beginner video so I didn't want to just do a fast forward with no talking so we're working on our altered book journal and I ended up kind of doing this video as kind of a double video thing uh, reason being is I wanted to the answer to the question once we would made a journal out of an altered old vintage book and filled it with just the pages what do we do with it because I see that question a lot so depending on what you're doing it for you might have a different answer so i want to kind of go over a couple of things that i like to do with them and then the other thing this is sort of also a combination with another new project uh, i decided to go ahead and do meg journal she's the host of this junk journal july and it's just uh 31 days of prompts it's really loose. You can do them in order, not in order, do multiples on one day. And because I'm starting late, I'm going to go ahead and go for it. And I might end up doing multiples just to get caught up because today's the 4th of July and I've only done the first page with just number one. So I may, actually, I, I could say that I did two also in here. So I'll, I'll kind of show you what I did uh, just real quick. And then if you want to watch the fast forwarded you know step by step thing then you it'll be a part of the same video so first i want to address we've made our book with an altered vintage vintage book we just used the cover and then we took a pages from a duff, bunch of different books music paper all sorts of things um even some digitals and created the signatures so now what do you do with this you know this is kind of a first step for me so i'm going to make reference just for fun to one that i've already been working in so i haven't done anything in this one who knows maybe i end up selling this one because i haven't um, done anything else to it so i don't know maybe somebody wants it like it is so that's one thing you have to consider if you're doing these to sell them Maybe somebody else who is a junk journaler or wants to do the artistic other part but doesn't really want to build the book, then you may be able to sell this just as a naked book like this. Um, also, you may want to gift it to someone who's creative that uh, you, it's, you're doing it as a gift and they already know what to do with this, to journal on this. Um, then you can give it to someone like that. The other thing that you can do is add a little bit more to it and then gift it. So with that in mind, it would be more like my elocutionist journal. So if you want to see this one, there is a playlist and I'll put it down below for how I went about putting this book together because it has a totally different spine and I have already started working in it. So I'm going to show you real quick a little bit of this one in case you haven't seen anything and just talk about what your next steps might be in a journal like this. And then I'll show you one that I'm actually gonna journal in. So my next step um, for that a naked book would be to go through my pages again. You know, like I have a lot here that have nothing done to them. Okay, so um, imagine this was the beginning of my book and see these are all just nothing done to them. So my next step as I was doing this book 
is the other thing, and I have videos for this that you can see in this series, so I won't go into great detail, but the other thing that I like to do is to work on some envelopes that I could use as flips or pockets. Now you can make pockets without using old envelopes, but it's just something that's kind of already started for you. So these I've printed on using that same French Chateau kit that I've been using. And I printed a bunch ahead of time just on old recycled envelopes. So I do have videos how I do this, but then you can take these and start turning them into little pockets. Let's see, this one I've started by lining it and I may end up cutting it in half or folding it in half um, and making it be kind of a flippy thing. So you can do some ahead that you've already kind of, this would be another flippy one that I can do. So I'm not gonna go into how I do all these just because there are videos on this. Like I said, I will put that link down below. But you can start thinking about different um, pockets that you might want to add to your pages. So that's kind of the first thing that I would do for a next step is to just go through, um, like I've added one here that was an envelope and then I've started a card. It's really not decorated up too much um, because this I can just grab and work on for a few minutes at a time if I want. I'll just, you know, I don't even do them in order. I'll just go to a page and think, okay, I'll do a little flip here. I didn't want to cover this up completely. I did an envelope. It has a piece of paper in it that can be written on. So if I'm going to sell this journal or give it as a gift, I want to leave lots of writing space so that they can, you know, write on it. They can glue things down if they want. There's, you know, you could add more paper in here. This is a little tuck. So you can make little little bits and little tucks, spots for writing. This I'm gonna end up gluing down. It's just another little kind of flappy thing and then I can actually put something inside of that. So for me, this journal has been a lot of fun to work in um, because I'm just, adding things as I feel like it. I may only have 10 minutes at a time to work on this, you know. This is the other side of that that envelope, the flap, and it's now a little tuck. So I just kind of go through each page and add something to it. And each of these is not finished. This is not decorated, but I thought this card and this embellishment might look good. Maybe I put this here, maybe I put it here. I just kind of start, um, flipping the pages and see what feels good to me. If, I, if I'm if i gonna do something later, I'll just clip something here, like maybe, so that I don't forget. Maybe I'm gonna glue this down just part of it and it'll be a tuck, you know? And then this is a little insert here that is an envelope that's a pocket that also has a tuck. So you can just keep adding as you go. Here's something I thought might look good on this page. You know, here's something, again, a, a card that's not finished, but I've started it, and, you know, I've added a little um, spot here, added a little lace to the page. You know, you can just do all anything you want. So this, I could decide later on that I want to continue working in this one, and I want to just go ahead and journal in it. Um, I can do that, or um, if it hasn't gone too far, and it's just kind of a blank journal still, but it's decorated somewhat, then I can gift it or sell it. So that is one option that you can do with this journal. Um, maybe you're a person that writes in a journal. I have actually done some on consign or not consignment, um, commissioned some from, from someone that writes in it every day. And so they want one with lots of blank pages. So if I were to give somebody a book like this, um, you might not think, well, how is this a journal? How can I write in this? But you can, and it's actually just a kind of a artistic, creative way to do it. You could take this page and you can just write this direction right over the book page. And that looks really neat. You can add a picture to it, glue to it, uh, tickets or something. If you know, if you're if you're keeping it for memorabilia and things like that, you can attach things. You know, staple them on tape them on, clip them on. That's if this is you're the end user of this journal. So I could add things to this if I wanted just to decorate it up more or leave it or add lace to the edge. Um, and then I can write on this. You know, it's, it's like this with any page. I can write on any of these. I can um, write, maybe I don't want someone to read it later. So I, maybe I write all over this and then I paint over it and add a picture, you know, a collage on it. 
So to me, any of these type of pages are, could ha uh, be collaged on. You can add envelopes to those for pockets, um, but these are all writable. These are just cute. These are could be cute little embellishments, even though I've made this a pocket. You know, maybe I maybe I cut these to these off and use those, cut them out, fussy cut them and stick them somewhere else. So it's even kind of fun to put maybe pages of stickers in here, or you could add maybe add a little envelope of little embellishments and things for the end user, you know, so that they have things that maybe they want to glue them where they want later. So just kind of um, use your imagination, you know, adding to or not, just depending on the person. Now, if you're giving this to someone and they don't know what to do with it, you can add a letter to them, you know, uh, what this is used for. But it can be, you know, maybe things you've cut out of a magazine and you, you glue them down and then just write little notes or, like I said, photos if you've gone on a trip, maybe you're using it for travel. So you just have to kind of look at each page as a blank slate that you can do whatever you want to. So for this one, um, like I said, in this video, I'm adding what I did on my first page. So I took this um, prompt list from Meg Journals and I wasn't sure I was gonna do it, like I said, um, because I didn't start on the first for one thing. And there's a hashtag if you do post anything, you can use this hashtag and then you'll, or you can even plug it in as a search and you'll get to see what everyone else is working on, anyone that actually posts what they're doing. You can do this for prompts just for your own pleasure and not post anything. You know, you can just do it for yourself as, as prompts to kind of help get you started on a page if you don't know what you want to do. So I decided because I don't usually follow along, I've, I've only done, this will be my second group thing that I've kind of, a group challenge that I've tried to do. So I thought, well, um, she, in her video, I saw she actually did two, the first two prompts in one page. And so I thought I can do this if I can, you know, if it's so loose that I can just do whatever I want. So I'm gonna show you my first page that I did. And then uh, after I've done that, if you want to continue watching, you can watch my whole fast forwarded, narrated um, version showing exactly how I put this together. So um, for me, when I do a journal, um, and like I said, I haven't done a lot of them where I've actually used them myself. I like just creating them. To me, that's part of the fun. And I think there's a lot of people out there probably like that, that don't actually write in a journal but they just have so much fun creating them. That's why you either need to, you know, give them as gifts or donate them or sell them or something to someone that will use it and appreciate it. But i am decided I'm gonna go ahead and use this one in, in practice. So I like kind of doing art journal -y sort of things. So I'm just using actually for mine, just to make it um, kind of a challenge for myself, is I keep this shoe box full of all my little bits and scraps. Um, and you can, you know, just take a few of these and you and, and use or just dig through and use whatever you want and have access to whatever you want. I have the same thing. I have a drawer that has like laces and trims and string and all that sort of thing too. I do have a, a few things like that that ended up in here, but this is mostly just paper. So uh, you can, you know, use this. This to me is going to uh, be a way to have me use up scraps and be creative. And then what I do is I also keep a smaller box just on my table. So this would be the scraps that I'm just maybe um, acquired in the last couple of days, what I've been working on. So this starts to get full, I go and dump it in the big one and then just dig through. So you could actually just take a few just to limit yourself and then put them in a smaller thing and just work from that. And that way it's not too overwhelming. So for my first page, because the prompt was begin, um, I went ahead and one thing I do love is quotes. Um, you've seen me use them in a lot of books and because I don't journal uh, where I want to put my own thoughts down, sometimes I just go through my book of quotes I've collected or even just look online and maybe type in a prompt word. So for this case, it would be begin. Maybe you're, um, you're having a day that you feel sad or you're having a day that you feel really exhilarated or whatever. You plug that in on the computer and put quotes with that word, and then all sorts of things will come up. And that's just kind of fun because it helps you um, 
I, I like researching things, and so that's kind of a fun thing for me. So I plugged in the word begin, and then I um, found a little quote that I liked, and I used that in my card. Um, so it says, and suddenly you just know it's time to start something new and trust the magic of beginnings. And that was the perfect thing for my first page. Um, in the first page, it just happened, and it, it didn't just happen, it was intentional. But I put on the first page of my journal um, an introduction page from a book. And so it said introduction and the romantic drama. And so I just liked this. It was just kind of a fun thing for the first page. So I have my quote. Then I went through some clothing tags. And there was a clothing tag that actually said, each piece of this collection is a unique, individually crafted work of, work of art handmade. And then and there was another line that I ripped off. You'll see that in the video if you watch. But anyway, so um, I, I made the card. And then a little tag. This was also another little clothing tag. So I could use this page. I could put, I put July 1st on here. I could actually put July 1st and 2nd on here because I kind of reinvented um, using these clothing tags. Uh, and, and all this, everything on this page was actually came out of that scrap box. So I didn't use anything that wasn't in that scrap box. So um, that's just kind of an overview of my page. Um, and so this is kind of an art journaling sort of thing. I actually did, and you'll see in the video if you watch it, um, I actually did write a sent, write something on the back side of this little part, and then I glued it down. So that's the other thing that you can do if you're not someone who, uh, if your reason for journaling is kind of my reason for journal not journaling, is I'm not going to write down a lot of personal things that somebody's going to find later on when I'm gone. Um, because it might be taken out of context. People are going to, I don't know. It, it just to me is too personal. It's just nobody else's business. I'm doing this for myself. So I like to do hidden messages where I, I'll use quotes maybe, um, that sort of thing. They mean something, but it's not like I'm writing something personal that I don't want someone else to read later on. So I write it and then hide it. So I wrote it on the back of this, glued it down. You can do the same thing by writing on a page and then putting more art on top of it. And that way it's there, it's subtle. Someone might see a word here or there, but you don't really care. It's really for yourself. So that's what I think junk journaling is for. It's uh, just a place to be really creative. I think when you're trying to use uh, things that would have been thrown away and not necessarily all this. This is would maybe not be a junk journal I mean somebody Maybe you know that there's value in this book and there's value in this paper. So that maybe isn't really junk. It's it's just Repurposed things that I'm using but there's nothing junky to me about it um, but it's become a term that's kind of um, covers a broad range of journaling things now. So I'm okay with that. That's fine. Um, but I kind of look at this more like a little bit of kind of art journaling. So, um, you know, create a book out of something old, you know, if you want, or something new or something recycled, and then either gift it, sell it, or enjoy it yourself. And um, it's just kind of a place to practice and be creative for me. So I hope that you uh, liked this little series for beginners. Like I said, there's other videos that I have that will cover some of the other things, and I'm just going to continue working this. I'll probably share it as I maybe do pages. I'll share them. But if you want to watch the detailed version of this one, just um, continue watching, and it's going to pop up right away. So I got a little bit of a head start on my page by looking for a quote about the first prompt which was begin. So I found a little quote uh, with the word beginnings in it and thought it would be perfect for the beginning of my junk journal July journal. So I have a little hole at the top of my page that I need to cover up and I have no idea where I'm even gonna start. So I just start grabbing some scraps out of my shoe box and I find a piece that would be perfect for an angled pocket. It's a piece of hand painted paper uh, on a book page that needs to be reinforced. So I'm gluing it with the Elmer's craft glue stick to an old book page and decide it needs another layer. So I'm just folding it over and that will be my pocket. I'm just gonna tear it along the same line of my 
a scrap. And then I'm thinking about collaging on it, but I'm gonna go ahead right now and just use some uh, Distress Oxide in Vintage Photo and do around the edges till I kind of see what I wanna do. Uh, I'm gonna need to cover up that hole, so I'm trying out a few different things. And I end up uh, finding a scrap from the French Chateau uh, Digital from Roxy Creations. And I know I have a piece of that on the next page, so I kind of want it to this page to look good. It's it's the first page of my book, so I like for that page to kind of reflect what you're going to see. It's kind of like what your front porch looks like. Um, hopefully, will reflect what's inside your house. So it's the beginning of my book, and I want to be very eclectic with this book because I have a lot of different styles that I like. I'm using my scrap box, so there's gonna be a little of everything in there from digitals to my hand-painted papers in bright colors or pastels, some vintage things. This is an old book page. Uh, that little piece that just sped by there was a, a, a picture of a door that was out of a book. I'm cutting a little stamp shape out of this little gold uh, painted piece. You can't see it in this photo yet, but there is an actual stamp of a stamp on that. So I want to make my edge like a stamp. I'm using pinking shears and I'm just cutting along the edge and then very carefully just moving it over um, just a tiny bit so that I'm kind of doubling up on my little points and it makes it more like look like a little stamp. So I am just going to add that um, and I'm kind of making a little cluster off to the left there with some of the rustier and orange and gold colors um, using also this vintage door and just kind of making a little thing to the side. I decide I need to, of course, go and do my vintage photo around that edge and glue that together. So I'm just going to draw a line so that I know where I want my glue stick to go. And then also I just line up the back and then I have my pocket finished there. I take it over to my sewing machine, as you can see, and do some black lines, just kind of messy around the edge. And... I'm gonna do some black splatters with a black Posca pen. Uh, when I did my first splatter, I got a big dot right in the center, and I don't know if that's gonna get covered up or not. So I'm just gonna take a baby wipe and kind of smudge everything. I want it to look grungy and just to kind of be in the background. So I'm just gonna kind of grunge up the little dots and then kind of get rid of that big one in the middle um, with my baby wipe and just kind of lay out my pocket. I'm trying to decide if I want to keep those threads on there or not. Sometimes I like to just bunch them up, so I'll leave them there for now. I've torn that digital down a little bit and made a, kind of a crown looking thing for the top of the page with another piece that had already cut a scalloped edge. And that piece, along with the extra piece that I added to my front of my pocket, kind of pull in that darker color that's maybe on the next page in the digital. Um, and that kind of helps me, you know, kind of have my variety. I'm gonna do vintage photo again around this page. I protected it with another book page because I don't know what's gonna happen on the next page. So I'm kind of just laying it out again um, and gonna lay out my little cluster and then, you know, darken up some of those edges and maybe tear them up a little bit if they're too straight. And I'll just um, kind of figure out where I want to glue those things down. So I'm going to tear that a little bit more and then just use a glue stick and attach those three little pieces uh, for at least a beginning cluster. I like how the colors of those all kind of bring in that rust from the fabric that's on my spine and it just kind of ties everything together and gives me a little balance to all the blue and green in the pocket. Here I'm gonna look for some butterflies. These I had hand stamped and then used watercolor to kind of color them in. So I'm gonna pull out a few of those and see what I might like uh, because this is my beginning page and I think butterflies are kind of a new beginning. I don't really journal on my journals as far as writing personal things that people might read later, but I do like to put hidden messages. So I'm writing on the back of this and it says something to the effect of stop overthinking. That's my big problem. I take way too long to do everything because I'm way overthinking. So it's just a reminder to stop overthinking, breathe, relax, and create. 
Um, and so that's what I want this journal to be, is just kind of more of an art journal, something for me to practice in, um, being more comfortable doing this type of journaling. Uh, you know, some people do write in their journals, and I'm just not that person. So I kind of look at mine more as just artistic reflection and that type of journaling. I was going to do some black just marking on there, um, but then I found a little scrap that had it, so I, I just took that off for another bit of color and, and um, added that. I'm digging through my clothing labels that I save, and I found a couple that I liked what they said, um, at least on parts of them. So this is a little vellum one, and I'll show you at the end what it says, but I didn't want all the words on there, so I just am tearing off what I want, and I'll use that on um, this page somewhere. Not sure yet, but um, it will be used somewhere. And then I really liked this side of this hanging tag. Um, said something about um, like investment and happiness. And so I'm showing you that on these shiny tags, if you just use your Distress Oxide and then dry it with your heat gun, it'll wipe right off with a baby wipe. So you have to prep that first. Use some clear, transparent gesso if you want whatever you're covering up to actually show through. You could use white gesso if you wanted it to get pushed back into the background or disappear completely, but I like the words on there, so I want to be able to see those. But I wanna be able to add my Distress uh, Oxide to that because I don't like just bright white. So I have put a coat on there and just dried it with my heat gun. And now I'm gonna find a clock face that fits, um, it's about a two inch, I think, that fits on the back side of that tag because I don't really want the writing that's there. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of my art glitter glue on that and then line it up with my grid with the 12 o'clock so that I get it on there straight. And now I have a tag. I'm gonna go ahead and punch a hole because I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it and might wanna dangle it from something. So now I can use my Distress Oxide in the vintage photo and it's going to stick, of course, to the paper, but now it'll even stick to that side that I used the clear transparent gesso on. Um, and I'm going to add, you can kind of see it, it's um, uneven in the color, which I really like. It just looks more distressed. Then I'm using some ground espresso also in the oxide, just around the edge, just to give it a little bit more dimension. And then I'm going to do the same thing around my quote. I'm going to put some dist the Distress Vintage Photo, and then I'm using some Sheer Shimmer uh, sparkle spray that I love. So it's a liquid spray. It's really a fine shimmer. Uh, sometimes big uh, droplets come out like that just happened. And it's going to uh, affect the oxide. It kind of makes the color separate. But you can see that nice little shimmer um, that's just real subtle. But it's just one more added layer, added detail, added dimension to my page. So the more layers you add, the more interesting it is. And so when you're trying to you know, do something and it looks a little one dimensional or flat, just keep adding layers to it for some from uh, some depth and dimension, just some little details like the stitching. Maybe that's not your thing or maybe the vintage photo, maybe you like another color, something like that. I'm trying out some um, scraps of the French Chateau again. That's a digital kit that I have from um, Roxy Creations. I can put a link down below for you, but I have some scraps and I'm going to use that for the background of my card just again to kind of mix my styles because I've got some bright color and just kind of um, abstract kind of painted papers and then some kind of grungy vintage things. I don't have a circle die, which would have been the perfect thing so that I could have centered my hole, but I don't have one. So I just trimmed the bottom and I'm gonna center it side to side. I might be putting this um, little label inside. I'm not sure, and I don't know why I did the hole, but I just, you know, I'm not really thinking. I'm just kind of doing. So I decide that I don't like the thumbs up in the middle of that tag, and so I've cut a little circle that I'm going to be gluing down just to cover up that thumbs up. I'm going to go ahead and again distress the edge of that. Um, once I decide one thing, I like to get it glued down so that A, I don't forget, and then B, I'm committed, and then it just will help me move forward. So even though I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, and I don't know what I'm going to do with the card, I decide I'm going to collage on the back of it. To collage, I'm going to just use the scraps out of my shoe box, and I'm kind of checking it with the back of that clock face because I'm thinking it may go that direction if I put it in there. And I think I want one side really colorful and just collage-y with scraps and the other side kind of more serene and calm. And so 
If you're not used to um, just collaging with scraps like this, I kind of, I, I don't think about it when I'm doing it, but now that I'm watching it back, I kind of have a rule, I guess, of, uh, I like to do things in threes or odd numbers um, and kind of do things in a triangle. So I'm not there yet, but if you watch, I have two pieces of book page and there will be a third one. I've just added a second one of the blue and I think here's the third uh, book page going down and you see it's kind of in a triangle um, where I arrange them and I'll do the same thing with the blue adding another blue in here at the bottom and I think that's just how my eye works. If you look at the kind of purpley pink to the left and the gold in the bottom corner and then that red in the top corner those three make a triangle. So I'm kind of just, you know, try to balance the color around the collage. This one has neutral and blue. So you can do things in fours too. So the blues I'm kind of ending up with a little more. The other thing that I like to do is if I have a large uh, space of one um, color, maybe I break it up with something even smaller like I've done with those couple of little strips. And I'll be adding another little spot um, up there to the corner of that really beigey spot. And then I have one more empty spot. I'm going to be putting a big piece of turquoise, which I know is kind of large, but I'm in my mind thinking that a big part of that's going to get covered up with something else. So I'm not too worried about it. I keep thinking my quilt might go there. So I'm going to just trim around the edges from my little um, collaging and then use my circle punch. I'm using some new scissors that I got that I really like. They're from Tonic Studios. They're Tim Holtz, and they're, I think, the 9-inch ones. Um, but I like that they're really long. You can get a nice, long, straight cut without having to pick your scissors up. I can't find my cuticle scissors, which have a rounded curve, and they're good for snipping the little bits out of that circle, out of the inside of the circle. But I can't find those. So I'm still kind of testing out what might go where. And then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clip the corners, and make those rounded. And then I've gotta use an emery board to get that little bit off the inside of my circle because it's kind of bugging me. Laying out again, just to kind of get an idea before I start gluing anything down, how it's gonna lay out. And I decide I need a little um, backing for the quote. And then I also wanna go ahead and distress the edges. It, it just helps me, I know I'm gonna do it anyway. It just kind of helps me visualize uh, where to put things, what color I might want behind my quotes, if any, just to kind of frame them more. So I'm kind of testing that out again. And I really do still like the light airy side and then the darker side, but I do need a frame behind that quote. So I'm just finding another painted scrap of paper that I'm gonna tear out loosely around. And then I'm using the ground espresso for this just because it's a little bit darker and I want it to stand out against my collage. So I get that laid out how I want. And it's not a ton of contrast, but at least it shows up a little bit better. So I'm kind of just double checking everything again. And then I decide that I think I might want to doodle around the clock face. So I'm going to go ahead and glue my label down and my quote. Um, that way I will know where I want to do my doodling and I won't kind of go out of the area. So I'm going to glue that down. And then I'm going to take my, I'm using my um, Micron pen with a plastic nib that I usually doodle with. This is really not the right pen um, to do this, but I'm going to just show you. It doesn't, I don't show you up close, but it, it writes okay, but it will skip and it's really not a paint pen. So because I'm trying to write on painted paper, it's not going to work very well. So I'm going to get my fine Posca black pen and go over uh, what I doodled already. You might even want, if you're not comfortable with your doodling, you might want to use a pencil first and then go over it with a paint pen um, because you think, you know, if you make a mistake or anything, then it's it's kind of permanent and it's not as fine as using a regular pen. So I've just made some circles on the one side and I end up not really liking how heavy the doodling is on the right side. So I'm gonna cover that up and just collage over it. So even if you make mistakes or things that you turned out you didn't like them, it's just gonna 
you know, you can always add another layer and it's just gonna, you know, build on your collage or your piece of art, whatever you're doing. And you'll just keep working on it until you like it. You know, not everybody um, is gets exactly what they want the first time. I don't know anybody that does. And sometimes, some days you're just, your mojo's working with you and some days it's not. So just don't, you know, scrap things. You can always reuse them or reuse a part of them. Um, but I went ahead and covered it up, and then I'm just going to do the circles around the whole, uh, the whole larger circle, and I'm good with that. And so instead of doodling more around that, I'm just taking my pen and I'm making, you know, three dots randomly here or there, and then I'm going to just do some stitching um, that looks like stitching around the edge. I don't want to stitch it with my sewing machine like I did on the pocket because. I have black thread in there and I want black on one side, but I want it to be light and airy on the other side. So I don't want to really stitch it. I'm just going to make stitch marks with my pen. And that's that side. So on the other side, I'm going to go ahead and glue my butterfly down because I really like that. I love that combination of colors. And I decide I'm going to go ahead and put that little vellum tag piece at the top of that side. So now I really do have a card that has um, two sides that are, you know, just in contrast to each other, depending on my mood. And I like that because I, it kind of represents me. I like lots of different styles. I like to mix them up. And one day I might be in one mood and one day I might be in another mood. And so uh, I like to have all those options and all those different parts. So I decided not to put the big tag. I decided to, to I wanted it to look like something clear. So I did this off camera, but I took some acetate and I just got a big piece, got my glue stick. I put a little bit of glue on the little circle first uh, so that I could stick it down, decide where it was gonna go. And then I'd put glue on the tag itself and then stuck it down and flipped it over and did the other side. And then that way, everything kind of lined up where I wanted. And then I just trimmed it out with the scissors. So. It was kind of not really a specimen tag sort of thing, um, but I just wanted another different texture. So for my pocket, I'm ready to attach that now, and I'm just going to take some scrap of, t of book page, fold it in half just to make a little gusset. And that way I have a little bit more room in my pocket if I want to add anything else, and it just makes my card go in easier. So I'm just doing one on the sides, not on the bottom. So you just glue one side to the back of your pocket and then put glue on the other side and then you'll just attach it there to your directly to your page. And that just gives you, like I said, a little bit more room in your pocket and your pocket won't be so tight. So I decide I don't like the strings on the top on the bottom one, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut those off. And see my pocket, my my tag goes in easily inside, uh, just in and out. I wanted to leave that little um I didn't attach um a ribbon or anything to the top because I want to see where it says introduction but I do go ahead and decide to attach this tag to my pocket and I'm just going to use the little light bulb pin and that way I can flip it and see the other side if I want but that is my finished card and my finished pocket on my first finished page so I hope you enjoyed this video I'm going to go ahead and put the date on it this was the date uh, the prompt for July 1st. So I'm going to add that. Hopefully I'll get caught up, but I'm going to do this at my own pace and just put the dates for the dates. So have a great rest of your day.